morning YouTubers of all persons who want to learn how to troubleshoot a Venus solenoid or inlet switch on the intake side um, there is a problem with this BMW 750 Li we are going to troubleshoot to see if we can solve it it started but it is idling and a little bit rough and so on it's not smooth out and I know it has a couple of trouble codes in it so we are going to now use and run a calculated test plan on it to see what we can find out what we could solve with this software and um, so on so this is the current eye level on the car this one is um, E65 it left the factory in 2007 or September probably come out as a 2008 and um, then the last time we worked on it the eye level was updated to 2015 of July alright so we are going to run a calculated test plan go here troubleshooting and these are the, the codes that are in the car right now and it states here that the DME we have inlet venous adaptation stop and DME again inlet inlet camshaft tooth offset to crankshaft you know that the owner said he pulled off the head to solve some issues with the um some form of eccentric shaft he probably change he probably uses an head from a different BMW engine and um, try to swap out and use that one but something is not corrected 100% as it would be from the factory so maybe he has to pull the car down again so we're going to now click on um, calculate this one at the bottom right we're gonna go forward and see what comes up in that test plan and as we can see here we have a couple of these side light brake light this is for the light module the one we want is this one here and that one there those two and so on um, let us click on filters and look what needed to be turned on here we need to have repair instruction turn on power description power elimination overview wiring diagram vehicle technical diagnosis and function changes to do. We need to have connector view. We need to have technical data, installation location, so vehicle software information that needed, pin assignments is needed and uh, repair instructions and that's it. We just leave tightening torque and special tools and operating tools out of it and then we click accept to save that and then it drops, um, you know, it add those to the measures plan just in case if we needed it because you can see FUV main here the function and description of the variable camshaft control and the SSP is the wire diagram for valve 1 and 2 and so on but the one we needed is that one here Venus solenoid valve on it so let us press display to bring up the ABL on the, uh, the procedure window with the function and description combination window alright process is still running all right so there we have it we have to now read over this side here that says that will be we have to read this side here all the way down and let me see if I can highlight everything we can read all of that way down to the bottom to find out how we look at it what diagnosis states here said diagnosis we're gonna read right here said the Venus system features complete diagnostic capabilities. A corresponding fault code is entered in the DME fault entry if a fault occurs during engine operation. An engine link home program is nevertheless still possible if the Venus system can no longer be activated in the event of damage. Let us read here the design and function before we read at the top. The Vena system consists of the following components of each row of cylinders. It consists of inlet sh camshaft, Venus gear unit with sprockets, oil distributor, intermediate plunge, solenoid valve, non-return valve, pulse generator gear or camshaft sensor. The required position of the inlet and exhaust camshaft is calculated from the engine speed the load signal and the other measured engine data. The Venus adjuster units are controlled accordingly by the DME control unit. 
for this purpose, the venous system is pressurized directly by engine oil pressure. Solenoid valves, timed by the DNA control unit, open the oil channels to advance or retard the camshaft. The camshafts are infinitely adjustable within their range of adjustment. As soon as the relevant optimum camshaft position is reached, the solenoid valves maintain a constant oil volume in the adjustment cylinder on both sides of this chamber. In this way, the camshaft remains in the corresponding position. When the engine is started, the inlet camshaft is in the retard limit position. Okay, so let us click at the top here. Okay, let us continue. Good. Let us click at the top here and go up, scroll up. And let us read now at the top here that says this. The venous system serves the purpose of increasing torque in the lower and medium engine speed ranges. Reduced valve overlap results in lower red diesel gas quantities during advent. Nitrous oxide components are reduced by internal exhaust gas recirculation in the partial load range. This achieves faster heating of the catalytic converters, lower untreated emissions after cold starting, and reduced fuel consumption. The total adjustment range of the inlet and exhaust camshaft is 40 degrees of crankshaft rotation or 20 degrees of camshaft rotation. Alright, so let us go forward. Let us read on the left now. So, following fall code is stored for the tested function component group. DME control unit fall code is I think it's 2 the DME control unit here 2 a a a The possible cause of fall here is the venous solenoid valve. Inlet faulty or contaminated or incorrect chain length or chain tension. Incorrect position of sensor. So the chain might be slack or the tension and need to be changed. Could be that. So therefore the chain could be slack which cause a drop in the synchronization of the inlet cam with the front shaft sprocket. So maybe he have to change the chain and maybe he have to change also the inlet valves and so on. He said he pull off the inlet valves and he blow through them with compress here and nothing seems to be plugging up the passageway and so on. So let us go forward with this thing. Check lines and plug connections. Check control unit, venous solenoid valve, and blah, blah, blah. Okay. If we check this and click next, check the following component, venous solenoid valve inlet, stick movement, locking due to dirt contamination, sharp, electrical malfunction, and so on. So remove component for this purpose. Activate the 12 volt supply voltage. This is just a procedure which we will follow to test the, uh, the solenoid itself by removing the connector and then apply 12 volts to the two pins that are plugged, nail plug there. And the position, the piston must move by approximately 3 millimeter on activation. And I need to tell him too to actually do that part. Let me pause this for now. No, I didn't find any. Uh all right if you want to get a scratch pad hello yeah you can get a scratch pad if you want in a brother get a scratch pad a paper let me write down some stuff you have to do okay yeah because we need to solve this issue once and for all and we have no more issues with it Yeah, I said that we have to write down certain things on paper to do. We have to get we got we have to get new solenoid valves and put there, okay? You have to get at least two for the inlet side, okay? Uh -huh. Yeah, because it seems like we have issue on one side and so on. Um uh -huh. it is saying here in the ABL the procedure, it is saying here stiff movement or locking due to dirt contamination or electrical malfunction and so on. So if you get new ones, well, I don't know if you want to pull those off the car 
and then test them, bench test them, pull them off from their fasteners and then pull off the connector and then apply. Apply 12 volts to them and then see if it moves 3 millimeter and so on. And on a, you can test those one on the car and so on because they could be whole, they could be clogged, they could be having dirt in it. Because if the oil is allowing the, the pressure to pass through at sufficient time, when the DME turns on those valves, it will allow the um, the valves to be either retarded or advanced. So therefore, the car will respond accordingly, you know, according to driver demand. But if the valves is not allowing enough oil to pass through when they are closed on, that simply means that could be a part, that's part of the problem as well. Or it could be where the um, the tooth, the cam tooth is not synchronized with the, cr the crankshaft, okay? Yeah, because we have that as one of the four codes as well. I incorrect timing, that, that would be meaning incorrect timing. So it could be that. It could be also this one, incorrect position of sensor wheel. It could be that as well, okay? So if you want to write down on a piece of paper these things now that I'm troubleshooting, you can write it down because our problem is right within those um, scope. Yeah. Inlet camshaft, tooth offset camshaft. The adaptation stop. Let's just run a service function here. Just write down um, inlet solenoid valve. I mean, I don't know if they are the same for both head sides. That's when they, if the same valves can fit in both sides, I don't know how they design it. But just write you need two two inlet solenoid valve for the intake side inlet. And uh, just write down on the paper also um, cam position tooth may be off with the crank because it could be an alignment problem. It also can be where the chain is slack and the tensioner is not holding the chain in tension so it allows the chain to be slack so therefore it can cause the cam sprocket to vary too much the crank sprocket. So it could be off by, it could be off by half tooth or one tooth and then it throws out the whole time in out of whack. So just write those on the paper just for you to get an heads up as to what is what. Let me go back to the trouble codes and let us show you what I'm talking about. I don't come up the troubleshooting. These are there right here. Let us run the calculated test plan again. Two top set to crankshaft. So the camshaft two top set to crankshaft, that is one of the issues. So let us let us go forward and click on one of those. Okay, interface angular 006, come on, not accepted. Okay. Well, it has to be called never being read, huh? Do you still wish to try the system test? Yes. Come on, the cable has fault. Maybe need an icon here. So, engine temperature is zero. It's not measure anything, right? They said, wait until engine temperature is 80 degrees centigrade. All right, right now the present temperature is zero centigrade. So we're not getting any feedback from the cable the right way. You see what I'm saying? We have a, we have a communication issue here with the cable. Okay, now I'll tell you what I have different. I have an extension cable on the Y cable. Should I not? Well, you have an extension. I, mean, I have a USB extension cable on it. You think that has to do something with the communications? Oh, yes, it can affect it because I have one of them as well and it had provided some issues one time. Yep. Yep, I guess so. It can be a problem. Yes, it happens to me before. Okay. And um, let me get an icon. So you want to get the icon and let us continue this calculated test plan after you get the icon? Yeah. Yeah, because it might as well be, be um, 
we continue to test one later on when we get the icon because I need that to plug to the car in order for me to um, see the voltage on terminal 30 and terminal 15 and so on so I'm going I'm just gonna look at the inlet camshaft and see what wisdom I can garner from it and then what is the best way to narrow down so this issued one that says the crankshaft is off with the cam so I'm doing that now and then we probably have to stop because it will have us going in a circle all the time and reading over the calculated test plan running this whole salvage until we do some mechanical changes on the car alright alright we get the same thing the two ABL are back Same thing come up, same thing, everything is the two codes carry back in the same area of valve solenoid valve one and two. It was not possible to determine any basic features from the vehicle. The central encoding key or the vehicle order FA is invalid or not entered. In this case, the central encoding key or vehicle order must be subsequently entered by the encoding program. Okay, we, we know that this could be the cable. Alright, can you remove the cable uh, from the extension if I can do it? Alright. You did it? I've removed it yet. Alright, let me run a calculated test plan again with this thing here. Um oh, wait a minute. Let me run a vehicle test again. Let me see how it responds. Let me see what happens. Wow, control units in red. You see the problem here? Yeah, all control units in the red, so there's a communication problem with it. Let me let me um let me close off this session and restart over the reading of the control unit tree again. Let me see, let me see. Alright, let us start no I no fresh. Read out. I will go give the ID. Alright, we're back. Faster data is out, so let us go run back uh, this play again. This time, seven codes come up as opposed to six, so what is the additional? We have one, two, three, four here, four for the live module, and one for the ISP, AC, and we still have right, So this one, I'm going to click on that. And let's plan. Inlet camshaft is offset to crank. There's a problem with it. It's right. Whenever the code is coming up with that, it, I think it's telling the truth. We have to reset the timing on the inlet side, whichever the side is referring to, you know? We have to, we have to, um, we have to sort that out again. And, and probably have to put the new tensioner, the new chain. Following for code is toward for the tested function or component group uh, two a a a permanent fault permanent fault wow this is here a permanent fault causes by venous solenoid valve inlet faulty are contaminated incorrect chain length you see that yeah what does that mean 
Yeah, just write down those information on the paper. Just write down permanent fault, meaning that the venous solenoid valve, it is the, either the inlet is faulty or it's contaminated with dirt. And you can write down those two possibilities under it. All right, just write down possible causes of fault, Y6. To 281 right now exactly as I see it there on the on the page on the on the, on the procedure it have either incorrect chain length or chain tension or incorrect position of sensor wheel and that is where our issue probably is actually right now it's not timed properly it probably needed new solenoid inlet valve and it probably needed to readjust the cam to sync with the crank and then again the chain tension have to be set properly that is where our problem is at. This one here can probably get rid of the other code, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, because it's two codes. One for inlet and the other one is for mechanical, like two mechanical possible causes here. So write down that on the page and then... Yeah, is there a way we you could source from the dealership? How much for the two inlet valves and for a chain and a tensioner you could ask them for 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 you to replace that chain on it and the tensioner and then if you have expertise in using a cam timing tool you could time back the camshaft according to what it says in the specs you can use the repair manual in this study to do it though but call up the dealership and ask them how much for those items okay Okay. the chain for the cam and then the tensioner and then the two inlet valves so just in case we want to put those things new on it and then our only option now is to set the timing properly so that it sync with the crankshaft and then it doesn't give us that code anymore if it give us the code again after we make all those corrections it has to be that it's not done properly we have to do it as if we are doing it at the dealer hello yeah, yes we have to do it just like as if we were working at the factory and putting the engine together you know we have to have that kind of a concept in our heads when you're working on the car on your own you have to have that kind of a built-in okay, okay. yeah all right so let me, let me call and get a price on that and um and i'll order that icom and then what do we do we just wait until uh the icom comes in yes 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 wait until the icom comes in and so on but you still have to get the inlet valves and if you have the money to buy them and buy the chain and the tensioner, then just buy them and then if you can redo it yourself professionally, just do it with the guide of the software, okay? Because the repair instructions to do it is in the manual, okay? Okay. You know how to find that information? Yeah. You sure know how to use the program to find the information, right? Yeah, you, you gotta take the engine out to put that chain on, don't you? I mean, I mean, take the engine out, I don't think you have to take the engine out. I mean you have to pull up a lot of crap to um to, to, to get it to get it out. I mean you could follow some videos on YouTube, I don't know. The repair manual is in the Easter D and you could put in the VIN number and then you could go in um information service and then you could look for it. Let me show you a brief description how to find it. You looking? Yeah. Yeah let me show you a brief description of it. vehicle management and we're here right here this is where you scroll down and we look for it you could go engine and we could look for crank crank case ventilation we could look for um venus and um i think it's all the way down here we could find if you are variable valve gear or variable cam timing you know all right yeah we could click on that and then we click start search and then we pull up some information so that is how you find it you can put in the last seven digits in it if you do not connect to the car, you still can put the last seven digits in the software and then you click information search at the bottom right corner and then it will, you know, open up the window that we just left from, okay? Okay. And then you can look for the entry and so on. Because I noticed if you pull down the car, you can probably turn on terminal 15, okay? Because you know you pull out some connectors, so you don't want to turn the car on, the ignition on to read out anything. Just put in the VIN number in the software. Correct. Well, well, well. All right, we have a ton of list of stuff here. To scroll through to pick and choose which one we want here. And to remove the solenoid valves, there's the information here, left and right. 
and um, this um, well, adjustment cam timing on the left side adjustment this is a REP mean repair procedure so you know check cam shaft timing on left check cam shaft timing on the right so this is another way we could um, display how to check it and um, several different things follow yeah, my connection is bad. Hold on here. I'm trying to connect back to the wireless Can you hear me? Yes, I hear. Yeah. Okay. All right, you sound better now. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, we, you know, this is it right here. We could find it up all to um, cam, check in cam shop time on the right. So you could follow the ABL, um, the repair procedure here, and then you know you know how to do it and so on. So you know how to find it, right? Yeah. So you're going to now take the task on and do it again? Them, then go with your intuition and then start out the chain with a brand new chain and so on. So, what is it? Is the same chain that you use from the old engine? No, it's the, it's the chain that came on the engine. Okay, so tell me what was done. You remove the engine and put another one there, or you take off some parts of a bought engine and put it onto the one that is on the car block? I had a crack in my block. I bought another engine that was working. I took the block and put everything from my engine onto uh, the, the block, the newer block. Okay. I did not have to crack in it. Okay, I see now, I see. So, so I took my hands out, I got the valves done, I got new valve stems put on them. So I would have, I, you know, like the, the one thing where the sensor wheel, now if, when they did the valve job, if they didn't put them on right, that could be, so, but I never took them off. I don't know for a fact that that's not it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Okay, so you're not sure about if the sensor wheel is installed and positioned properly after they do the valve job, right? Correct. Okay, well, we can use the manual here to find out how we should set that. I think it's here somewhere. We have to go back and we can find it. And, uh... Um, Woof! So it seems like the easy thing to do would be to check the the, the NO solenoid to see if it moves three millimeters um, to change the, the tensioner and then try to find, figure out the, the, the position of the sensor wheel, if that's right. Yes, that is two basic options you can do right now that are simple to check and so on. But the reason why I told you to replace the valve solenoid inlet side it is because those um, solenoid may be old and they may have contamination of oil gunk in it that can plug up the channel and so on you know and you don't know you know they open the three millimeters so therefore the least debris can stop oil flow because it just open a small opening you know so we have to replace them with new ones and then now we take that out of the way hopefully the oil is clean and there's no damn gunk coming up through the, through this to the bottom of the engine and then coming up on top and then screwing around with minor operatives and then and that's what let's replace the inlet sensors with new one and you know the inlet solenoid valves and then we go forward because we do not seem to have a fault code on the left side of things and on the exhaust side we seem to have it on the inlet side and so on right or left i don't fully know yet maybe it's a right i think it's a right i don't remember i, I mean i have to re, 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 have to go back over it again and look just to make sure which side it is and um, yeah, back to, I believe it's the, the left side. The left side. When it's stood up in front of the car? Yeah. Oh, so that will be passenger side, right? Correct. Okay. And that's bound to. Good. All right. No problem. All right. So, well, just check out that part and then I'll get the icon and then, you know, you can contact me back online and I just go through it and look and then make sure, you know, we can try to solve it, you know? Okay. So, new solenoid, so yeah? I'm going to order that icon right now, and um, I should have ordered it two weeks ago, and, um, and then we'll go from there. 
Yes. Okay. Alright. Yes, brother. Uh, as soon as I get it, I'll, I'll give you the call. Yes, brother. Yes, sir. Cool. Alright. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yes, my friend. Everything. Okay. Let me continue troubleshooting this thing here. I can't do anything from my side. I'm just looking at software. So it's cool. a lot of this is a heck of a job. It's pretty easy to remove a centric job motor. It is pretty easy and not difficult to put single process motor. Card limited enough to be taken into consideration. BMW man. 
black man wagon BMW Okay, YouTubers, end up this vehicle session for now until the owner gets some solenoid valves and probably a chain and attention to set back the timing properly because there's a, there's an offset with the cam to crank, so therefore there's also an inlet valve problem, could be dirty valve, contaminated valve and so on. Or dirty oil, you never know. Or the, 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 the eccentric shaft, position sensor probably not installed correctly and so on. So. That amongst other things, probably two to three or four things need to be corrected first, probably two mechanical and then it will solve the other ones that have to do with software side of things. So let us end this test model for now and then we continue on it next week. Uh, with that said, goodbye everyone.